Uh, turning to uh, the border, and as we talked about earlier in the show, that uh, Senate Republican slash Democrat immigration bill that dropped yesterday. Um, the uh, I won't go through all the highlights or lowlights, as the case may be, just in terms of some of the more hotly debated aspects. Uh, in the legislation, seven-day rolling average of 5,000 counters per day, or 85, uh, a rolling average, seven-day, of 5,000 per day, or 8,500 encounters in a single day, then Homeland Security is required to shut the border down and turn away anyone who crosses. This goes on, as Lankford tried to argue on the Bart Roma show the weekend before last. Or, no, actually it was on um, Fox News Sunday. This does not mean 5,000 are allowed in before this authority kicks in. Single adults would be detained. Families would be released via alternatives to detention. Asylum cases would be fast-tracked to months rather than years under an expedited expulsion system. But as you go through all of this and funding levels and 50,000 new visas over five years, you get to what, to me, is the poison pill. Authorizes the president to suspend the border emergency on an emergency basis for up to 45 days if it's in the national interest. Well... Okay, so you have an an open borders administration that whose uh, executive has the power to suspend everything contained in this bill on an emergency basis for up to 45 days. And as we saw during covid, that just becomes one emergency declaration after the other every 45 days uh, in perpetuity. So what are we really talking about here is we're getting moralized to by Jim Langford. For more on uh, this legislation and uh, the particulars and the politics, we're pleased to be joined by Bob Price, Associate Editor and Senior Political News Contributor for Breitbart, Texas. Bob, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You bet, Dan. It's good to be with you in, in the border city of Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, that's um, exactly. Yeah. We're at Eagle Pass North. Um, Eagle Pass North, yes, indeed. Uh, so, so, so what's your reaction to what uh, came out yesterday? Well, I... You know, it's, words don't come to my mind here. I mean, it just, this, the right words just don't come. Langford went out last week and said, don't pay any attention to any of these rumors about this 5,000 right. cap or 8,500. This is all just rumors. Well, it's not rumors. It's fact. And it's, it's worse than what we thought it was. You know, President Obama's DHS Secretary, Jay Johnson, said during his administration that when they hit 3,000 per day, that was an emergency crisis that was unsustainable. Now they want to allow 8,500 in a day. They, they want to make it okay for 5,000 a day. You know, last month, just in, in, you mentioned Eagle Pass, just in the Del Rio sector, which includes Eagle Pass, and most of these crossings happened in Eagle Pass, there were almost 2,300 per day just in that tiny little piece of the 1,700-mile border between Mexico and the United States. Where are they getting these numbers to, and thinking that this is somehow acceptable to the, people, the American people? Chicago can't afford this. You know, these people are still going to get released, and they're still going to get sent to Chicago and New York City and Washington, D.C., and every little small town across the country – you know, you're seeing already seeing crime impacts in, in your suburbs there in Oak, Oak Brook. You know, how long are we going to put up with this? It, it, it's time. Senator Mike Lee said it's time for a change in leadership in the U.S. Senate, uh, particularly on the Republican side. It's time for the, the senators to do what the House members did and, and kick out these squishy senators that are just trying to appease somebody. God only knows who they're trying to appease, and and uh, they're certainly not listening to their constituents. And, and let's get some meaningful legislation, but we don't need new legislation. The president has the authority right now, today, to fix this problem, to reinstate the, the issues that were put in place by President Donald Trump that actually worked, that reduced border crossings for the entire southwest border in the, May, in the month of May of 2020, to 19,000 for the entire month for the entire Southwest border. You know, it can be done and it can be done by migrants having the absolute certainty of knowledge that if they enter the United States illegally between ports of entry, they will be returned to their country of origin or back into Mexico. 
Well, since Biden's not doing anything and letting this happen, and then you have somebody like Governor Abbott who's taking the lead on this, since he's put up more razor wire and other you know states are helping out, DeSantis is sending a thousand national uh, Florida National Guard troops. Has there been a decrease in entries on a daily basis? Is this working? Because I know less bus. Last week we had the least a number amount of buses coming to Chicago. Yes, there's been a dramatic decrease in the month of January. It was, it was cut by 50 percent along the entire southwest border. But that has more to do with what President Biden did behind the scenes and, and not talking about this publicly. Um, DHS Secretary Mayorkas and Secretary of State Blinken went to Mexico and they made some kind of a secret deal that even the, the Speaker of the House doesn't know what's in this deal. Hmm. And suddenly Mexico started taking action at the behest of the Biden administration to remove migrants from the northern border and ship them back either into central or southern Mexico. Now, this doesn't stop the problem. It just put a like a six-week delay in it. And so you're seeing a temporary slow down in the numbers as Biden's polling numbers were tanking. And and so um, he had to do something. But it's interesting. I contacted CBP last week and, and asked them after we got the numbers uh, for January, unofficial numbers for January. And I said, what do you attribute this to? Giving them an opportunity to maybe take a victory lap for taking some action finally to, to slow down the migrant crossings along the southwest border. Their answer was not anything about what Mexico is doing. It was just simply that this is a historical seasonal decline that normally happens in January. Well, we don't normally see a 50% decrease in January. So this raises the question, why are they hiding this? Why are they hiding this? Because they don't want their base to get angry with them because he's got enough problems with his base already. Well, the other thing, though, that we've seen, and maybe this is part of the explanation as well, is, yeah, because of the razor wire and the presence of the National Guard, and by the way, CBP and the National Guard, all this talk about a Texas standoff, every indication is that CBP and National Guard are on the same page, and they're getting along famously down there. Uh, they just have a problem with different executives trying to, 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 to put, push them in different directions. But but the other thing that Malusian has been reporting for Fox News is that, yeah, you've seen the decline in Eagle Pass and along the Texas border, but you've seen a significant increase in the San Diego sector. So move them, move them to states that aren't going to be busing them to Chicago and and New York, like California and Arizona under Katie Hobbs and away from uh, Texas, where they've reinforced the border anyway. We are seeing some of that uh, move, like, for instance, last week in, in the Tucson sector, the numbers were back up to 13,800 for a week. Uh, and so and that's where it was during the historic high in, in December. Uh, San Diego is seeing a big increase. Um, the Texas sectors are seeing a decrease. Uh, and, and while the, the visual effect and the, the will to do something by, by Texas is certainly impactful, the, the disruption of these migrant trains and, and t- taking people out of stash houses in Mexico and sending them back to the other end of the country is, is having a more profound effect. And, and that's forcing the cartels to shift their strategy as well and to move people further west. Mm. Uh, we're still seeing they're slightly lower numbers, but El Paso is still seeing big numbers as well. And, and so it, it is moving west, and that's a good thing for Texas. It doesn't help the rest of the country any. And keep in mind that the migrant crisis you're experiencing in Chicago is not a result of the few thousand migrants that Greg Abbott has bust up there. It's the hundreds of thousands of migrants that the Biden administration has brought there in the dark of night on flights and buses and any way that they, planes, trains, and automobiles, if you will, and, and bringing them up there surreptitiously without any consultation with local governments. How about we get the governor of Illinois to send some troops down there to help secure the southern border? Yeah, Maybe right. If they don't want to help Greg Abbott, they could send them to California and help secure the California Oh, border. they're sending them to the Middle East. 300. <laughs> there you go. Uh, one, oh, so I, I saw it was reported that Abbott spent about $125 million on uh, busing migrants to places like New York and Chicago. But I got to say, I mean, I, and I assume he's being received well by the electorate there. I mean, that is a fraction of the cost that just New York City and Chicago are spending. We're, I mean, statewide in Illinois, which is mainly Chicago, we know when you include the Medicaid uh, provided health care coverage and uh, payments, 
we're we're well into over a billion dollars. You know, we're tr- approaching a billion five at least. Tough to guesstimate, but we know that. So I mean, um, it's it's actually um, not to sort of sort of ironic to describe it this way, but it's actually fiscally conservative to do what Abbott is doing. Well, you know, um, Toyota used to have a marketing slogan: "You asked for it, you got it." Well. I hate to say this to Chicago residents, but you asked for it and you got it. You've declared yourself for years to be a sanctuary city. You refused to turn over criminal aliens who've committed violent crimes in your community to to ICE to where they could be deported. Of course, this administration won't deport them anyway, but under previous administrations, even the Obama administration, they deported many hundreds of thousands of criminal aliens. Sanctuary cities have been creating a magnet that's caused this problem for decades. And now you're you're seeing the, the results and the impact of this, where it's hitting your cost of housing, your cost of labor, your cost of health care, all of these things because of the promises to migrants that if they get to the United States, they'll be released into the country and welcomed into these sanctuary cities, and not just welcomed, but given tremendous benefits, given housing, given cash, given health care, given free education, all of these things that they can't get in their home countries. These are not political refugees, asylum seekers that are coming here. These are purely economic migrants, as, as Democrat Senator Kristen Sinema said yesterday on, on CBS. They're economic migrants. They're, they're abusing the asylum system. And, and unfortunately, cities like Chicago and New York and Philadelphia, uh, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles are paying the price for it. He is Bob Price, associate editor and senior political news contributor for Breitbart, Texas. Bob, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. You bet. See you next time. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. There's only one radio show in Chicago talking about today's biggest stories and telling you what they really mean. That show is this one. Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Listen up. Do you or a family member or friend have an outstanding student loan and don't know where to turn or how much you're required to pay? The rules around student loan forgiveness have never been as complex as they are right now. The wrong decision could cost you and your family tens of thousands of dollars in unnecessary loan payments. Attorney Ray Kaplan at Kaplan Law Firm is here to help you make the right decision. And they recently saved a radio listener over $145,000. Kaplan Law knows the rules, knows the laws, knows the regulations and loopholes inside out. Don't pay another cent until you've consulted with attorney Ray Kaplan. Call today to schedule a phone or in-person consultation. Call Kaplan Law Firm at 312-294-8989. That's 312-294-8989. Or visit financialrelief.com and click on contact. Financialrelief.com. Click on contact. Kaplan Law Firm, 25 East Washington Street in Chicago. All right. Jeff Chronic Pain.